Deadpool Negative back with another review of Daredevil 6 by Saul and Ahmed. Our and returning artist Aaron Cooter and with the and purchased at Comic Universe in Folsom, PA, on McDade Boulevard. Um, in my review of the previous issue, I expressed some I wouldn't say misgivings, but disappointment that the the uh, demonic villains aren't really manipulating events in Hell's Kitchen for their own advantage. They're just kind of they seem to be just guys who want to mess with Daredevil. And, um, which is uh, fine, but it's also like they're the seven deadly sins. There's, it just didn't seem there is, there really was any greater Uber plot. It was just like, oh, these de they're demons that want to mess with Daredevil. They're just using criminals to do it and possessing his friends. I mean, they, and, uh, you know, he's, def he's, un he's defeated, uh, three of his friends already who've been possessed by the seven deadly sins. It's corny as F. And, um... Let's see, but uh, the main thing I want to talk about this issue is like Aaron Cooter returns as artist. And, oh man, this is basically uh, Doctor Strange sends um, uh, uh, Matt Murdock in sort of a vision quest, you know, to uh, deal with the fact that these things are specifically targeting him and asking why. And Cooter just draws some amazing pages, and um, there's nothing Graham McMillan can nail him for here, so that's good. Um, look that up. Um, just, I just really enjoyed the look here and what, let's say widescreen Daredevil comics. I mean, Marco Chetto is a good artist. I've just never a big fan of him, but the Cooter, what Cooter's doing here just feels so bold and like a real, what I think the comic needed because like, you know, Daredevil has always been, has some of the best artists who ever worked in comics drawing it. From Colin to Miller to Mazzicelli to Jansen to Ramita Jr., who contributes to cover. And what that was the, there was a, like, John Ramita Jr.'s art was what attracted me to the character in the first place, the sort of kind of weirdness of it. That Hell's Kitchen was both real and kind of alien. And uh, Cooter doesn't exactly do that um, here, but he, he comes close. He comes, like, he just makes the, co the comic book appointment, appointment reading because it's just. It just feels bold and, you know, he even gets like major dram dramatic about just having uh, Daredevil pray and kneel and have a you know conversation. And like, you know, I don't know how much uh, input Ahmed had into choosing uh, Cooter, but he made the right choice. I do. You know, I want to compliment Ahmed. Like if, if he chose, if he had, like wanted to collaborate with Cooter, he made a good choice because he's, you know, trying to do a very internal thing with Matt and... Cooter is able to make something like Matt Mur Murdock just sitting there praying look dynamic and look like it's worth the five bucks I paid for it. Um, I mean, just, just look at this page. It's like, I mean, it's kind of gratuitous, but oh, I love looking at it. Um, but again, it's like, in terms of the actual story, it is, it's not bad, but it's, it's flimsy, like. Again, I am planning to review Ackman's run on Black Bolt, which remains his only really good, impactful comic. But that never, no issues of, I mean, I read it in trade. Like, no issues of that felt like, oh, he's writing for the trade. Like, that still remains the one comic where he really had a, this just seems slightly flimsy. Because, like, basically, Matt has a vision quest and he finds out, hey, I'm the good guy. Oh, and reminds himself, hey, I'm the good guy. And uh, there's also, uh, I don't know how this happened, but... Um, Again, like, and again, the only writer who ever really did Matt Murdock fighting little demons was um, Anno Senni, and it's difficult to top that woman, in my mind. But I thought the, I mean, it's corny as hell, but, oh, it works. It works. Again, like... Ahmed's uh, use of like, just having Matt be driven by his emotions, and that not actually not being a good, not being a bad thing. Like, there's no hey, Matt Murdock's kind of an idiot here. No, he's he's like, he, he's learning to use his righteousness under control, and it just it's we it's 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 not too bad, but it's it's just not great, you know. Like, I mean, I'm not a hundred percent on Chip Zdarsky on the Chip Zdarsky train, but his stuff just felt more dynamic. And this is just like, oh wow, that's great, but it also feels slightly. I don't know how to put it. I don't want to use the term empty calories because it's not. It's it's sugary. 
it's sugary and i just wish it just doesn't feel like there's enough depth for it to to be like really um worthy of of the effort that the artwork is putting in is putting in and of course at the end of the issue like because this is the 50th anniversary we have an appearance by and i don't think this is the, yeah, what the hell I'll spoil he was on the cover of the next issue wolverine and uh you know i don't think we've seen aaron cooter draw wolverine so that's kind of neat and it's been a while since daredevil actually fought wolverine which because that's neater so again i give this a cautious recommend like i just wish there was more depth to it but then again like it's it it, it is fun it is like i just like it's you know ironic that these guys you know how i talked about Ahmed and uh cooter's first collaboration that they do something it's it's what it was necessary after the Sadarsky run, but it's it's not grabbing me the way I think it should. But it's still worth checking out, if only for the artwork. Anyway, uh, hit the bell, like, and subscribe, and I will talk to you later.